Thanks, Senator Hernandez. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Gensel, the last time you came before the committee, I asked you to move expeditiously to adopt the Asset Management Advisory Committee's recommendations on diversity. And last October, 22 senators, including nine members of this committee, sent you a letter supporting the recommendations and asking for immediate approval. Can you give us an update uh, on the status of adopting these recommendations? So I uh, thank you, Senator. We've looked at, uh, there was four recommendations and there's some sub points in those recommendations and we uh, working, and I think we've informed your staff about this with regard to uh, two important ones in there. One is uh, a recommendation around guidance, staff guidance on how asset managers are selected and whether their um, years of service or their assets under management could be, uh, need to be taken into consideration or not. And another one is with regard to uh, EEO complaints and how those complaints are uh, uh, um, shared with other agencies and like. And I think we've made some good progress on those two. I, I've, I feel that uh, the staff will probably shortly be putting out that guidance. And uh, we continue to look at the other two uh, matters. Well, look, I appreciate that you're giving uh, some of these recommendations serious attention. But at the same time, I must say I'm disappointed. In so many other areas, the SEC under your leadership has taken bold steps uh, to protect consumers, to strengthen oversight of markets, uh, such as your proposed climate risk disclosure rule. However, when presented with AMAC's non-controversial, unanimous recommendations that would promote diversity in the asset management field, you haven't been as aggressive. So can you commit to make concrete progress on these recommendations by the end of the year? So, uh, Senator, I take uh, very seriously uh, 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 how important diversity, inclusion, uh, equity is important uh, broadly in our society, but to the SEC as an agency, uh, our, our senior leadership is probably uh, the most diverse and inclusive that we've ever been as an agency. Uh, we continue to uh, lean in to try to make sure that our agency, everybody can bring their best self to work and, and work and that we get the benefit of, 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 of the talent across this great nation. And in terms of, uh, in terms of policy, uh, it's, it's held up in court right now, but last year, uh, a self-regulatory organization uh, NASDAQ uh, put in place a listing requirement with regard to their boards of directors and diversity, and that was their decision, <clears throat> not ours. It predated me, but uh, we approved that. And on these four uh, uh, committee recommendations, as I said, I think we've made some pretty good progress on two of them. I think that guidance will be uh, out uh, in the near term, and we continue to work on the others. Well, I'd like to highlight one of AMAC's recommendations that I think would be particularly impactful. Uh, the AMAC recommended that the SEC require enhanced disclosure by investment companies and investment advisors regarding diversity within their workforce and leadership. You and I have spoken about the importance of leadership diversity at your confirmation hearing. I just heard your comments now. Uh, I think that disclosures about diversity are incredibly important which is uh, why I introduced the Improving Corporate Governance Through Diversity Act. Um, do you agree that enhancing diversity disclosures for advisory firms, investment company boards, and consultants would empower investors and fund managers to make more informed decisions? Uh, uh, again, as I said, I think that uh, we benefit in our, in our uh, it, in our organization at the SEC and in our great nation by tapping into the talents across this uh, our, our diverse nation. Um, and we're continue to look at this uh, recommendation of AMAC with regard to uh, disclosures. Well, one of the key findings of the AMAC study is that, and for my colleagues, AMAC is, is an advisory board that is, that is created, uh, you know, under the, uh, I believe it's the SEC. Uh, so one of their findings is that quote, investment performance by diverse asset managers is equal to or greater than the investment performance of firms that lack diversity in ownership and senior leadership, despite differences in size and length of track record. 
And that's why uh, they recommended that the SEC issue guidance clarifying that fulfillment of fiduciary duty does not require automatic exclusion of asset managers who are new to the industry or do not meet a certain threshold of assets under management. In your view, is it necessary for fiduciaries to automatically exclude newer or smaller asset managers in order to fulfill their duty? Um, uh, Senator, uh, on that, on the guidance, I, I sh share that view, I think, that you just said. And I think that's the guidance that the staff is working on to put out. And you're right, the, the AMAC is a federal advisory committee. It's under the FACA well, committee let laws. Me, let me close by saying, uh, fundamentally, using the excuse of fiduciary duty to exclude women and minority-led firms runs contrary to the actual data. AMAC study, along with a host of other studies by McKinsey, for example, and others, have repeatedly shown that diversely, diversely led firms outperform their non-diverse counterparts. Uh, and so given this data, um, I think that we can agree that new or smaller asset managers being automatically excluded under the guise of fiduciary duty uh, is actually not helping investors, it's harming them. Uh, and so that's why uh, I've been pressing on these issues. We'll continue uh, to work uh, with you. We hope to have a robust response by um, the commission. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.